All right, what I'd like to do now is show you how to go and do this factory in here, uh, factory. First thing I wanna do is I wanna see if I can pull anything out. And I look at this, and can I pull anything out? No, there's no common number between each one of those terms. Um, so the next thing I go and look is there's no per square, or I don't wanna uh, complete the square. So before I go and use a quadratic form, I wanna see, well, can I go ahead and still go and factor this? So I do my eight times C, which is two times negative three, which is a negative six, and my B, which is five. So I look at my numbers and say, what two numbers multiply to give me negative six, which would be a negative one and positive six, but add up to give me five. Now, there's gonna be three different ways I'm gonna show you guys how to solve this. Three different ways to find the middle terms. The first way is we know our two factors are negative one and six, all right? First way, we can take our two front terms and I could write two X, minus one times 2x plus six. Then from here, I just factor out what terms they have in common. So here I can't pull anything out, but here I can pull out a two. So I'm left with 2x minus one times pull out two x plus three. So therefore I have x equals one half and x equals a negative three. That's the first method. You just kind of take the a, what the a is without the square, put it in both binomials, and then factor out what they have in common. Another method is to take your two terms, and rather than writing the b term, take your two terms in there. So I could write, so that's method one. You could write 2x squared minus 1x plus 6x minus 3. So instead of writing my b term, I wrote what my two factors are. Then now what I'm going to do is I'm going to split this up into my two binomials and I'm going to factor out what I can. Here I can factor out a uh, here I can factor out a x. So I'm left with 2x minus 1. Here I can factor out a negative 3. When I take factor out a negative 3 from there, I'm left with a X has yeah, so a positive. Alex, what is Wait, I don't want to take out a negative three. I want to take out a. I want to factor out a positive three. I'm sorry. If I factor out a positive three, I'll be left with two x minus one. There we go. So now that I factor out a positive or a, a positive three, now I have two x minus one, two x minus one. Now I can factor out this, as we call factor by grouping. Now I can factor these two out. So I can factor out a 2x minus 1, and I'm left with an x plus 3. Again, same thing. x equals 1 half, x equals negative 3. And the final way I could do this, if either of those don't really make sense to you, you can always go and represent it as an area. So I could say, I'll make a box. And I'll put my A term and my C term. A term goes in the top left corner, or, and my C term goes in the bottom right. I put my two factors there, which were negative 1x and negative 5x. And then you simply just go ahead and say, no, that's not negative 5x, it's negative 6. six. <coughs> and you simply just say, well, where did my two areas go? And, or, or what is, if here's the area, what are the side lines? So you say, this is 2x. This is 1x. 2x times what gives you 3? Three. 2x times what gives you 6x? And you say positive 3. And 2x times what gives you negative 1x? Or 1x times what gives you negative 1? You say minus 1. Then you notice those again are the same factors. 2x minus 1 times x plus 3. So my answer is x equals 1 half, x equals negative 3. So there's three different ways you can finish off the problem. <laughs> there's three different ways you can fi finish off the problem when you're factoring a problem when a is greater than 1. All right? Question. Yes? How do you get like x times 2x minus 1 plus 3 times 2x minus 1? Right there in like that middle problem and the second step. This one? Mm -hmm. How'd you get that from the problem above? Okay, what I did was I took our two factors 
Which remember when we did the dime problem? We said these are our two factors, right? Yeah. So what I did was I took our two factors and I said negative one was here and then six was there. So what I did was I just wrote them in. Instead of our middle term, I wrote down what our two factors were. Yeah, I get that. Because five X, and then what I did was now I just split them up and I factored this and I factored this. Mm -hmm. This, factoring it, I can take out an X. Here, factoring <laughs> it, I can take out a three. Huh? Why would you take it out an X? Because these both share an X. So you can take it out. Okay. So I took out an X. These both share a three, so I took out a three. Then I looked at this whole this long equation. Three. Why is it now a positive three? And you took it out. Because when I took it out, now I have a 2x minus 1 in both of them, correct? So then what I did was I took out a 2x minus 1. And when I take out a 2x minus 1, I'm left with an x plus 3. That's where I got the plus 3. OK? Not that so that's how you find the root solution 0's x-intercept quadratic function when you have a quadratic form when a is greater than 